Hey guys, so I recently changed over the original lead acid AGM batteries that came with the Robo and I swapped them over for two 100 amp hour AllSpark lithium batteries. And I also changed the chargers as well, ones that have a lithium charging profile. So I went for a Victron AC charger and also a Red Arc BC DC charger. And I bought all that gear from the guys at Off-Road Living in Wangara. And look, I paid for this gear. I'm not plugging their company because they gave me a deal or anything like that. So anyway, we'll talk about those guys in a little bit. On our most recent trip, the AGM batteries that came with the Robo, they just completely failed. Um, they weren't holding charge. The fridge was cutting in and out. Uh, it wasn't a huge disaster. It was only a little weekend trip, so we didn't lose any food or anything. You know, we weren't out on a massive trip for two, three weeks off grid or anything like that. But I basically, I had a decision to make. Do I just swap over to some AGMs again or do I actually cough up the extra money and go for some lithiums? Um, so I, I sort of weighed up the pros and the cons and there's only one disadvantage with lithiums as far as I can tell and that's their price because they're bloody expensive but they've got a lot of advantages which make them like a really attractive option and uh, that's what we ended up going for. So their first advantage is their weight. They're only like 11 kilos each. The AGMs that came with the Robo they're almost 30 kilos um, but their big advantage is their usable power so with AGMs out of 200 amp hour battery bank you can only draw them down by 50% before you start damaging the battery and significantly reducing their lifespan which is probably what happened with the old ones to be honest um, lithiums on the other hand you can draw them down by 80% probably even more without running the risk of, uh, of damaging them and reducing their lifespan so out of a a 200 amp hour lithium battery bank you've basically got at least 160 amp hours of usable power so you can sort of think of them as being a bigger battery i suppose um and there the other one is their charge discharge cycles you can you can put them through 2000 to 5000 cycles and up to 15 years service now that's obviously best case scenario if you treat them well AGMs, on the other hand, you can only get 300 to 800 cycles or one to three years. So that's huge. That's a huge increase in lifespan. And basically, you don't have to swap them out every couple of years. And you don't have to worry about, oh man, are these batteries gonna fail on this trip or not? Like we've got a good 10 to possibly 15 years of service life out of these batteries. So they last longer. They're essentially a bigger battery. So even though they're much more expensive initially, over time, their costs sort of equalize. And they also, they operate in a smaller range of voltages. So even when they're down to a 20% state of charge, they're still at 12.9 volt. So all your 12 volt accessories are running as they should. AGMs, when you're down to 20%, they're at something like, oh, I think it's like 11.6 volts and you know, your lights are dim and you're getting hardly any pressure out of your water. Your fridge will cut in, you'll see that voltage just drop, 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 drop and then your fridge will cut out. Um, lithiums, even at 10% state of charge, you're still getting 12 volts. So you can pretty much run all your gear right to, right to when the batteries are dead flat. So that's huge. Bigger battery, longer lifespan, you don't have to swap them out every couple of years. Um, you can also run a 2000 watt inverter off just one of these batteries. Not that we're going to, we don't run air fryers or sandwich makers or coffee machines. We just use the 1000 watt uh, inverter just to charge drone batteries and camera batteries and the cordless drill, things like that. Um, but hey, maybe one day we'll get a nice fancy coffee machine in the Robo. Um, so, oh, and they also come with a four year manufacturer's warranty so their warranty is longer than the expected lifespan of lithiums so when you add up all those advantages it was an easy option in the end it really was okay so look like I said before I bought all this gear off of uh, off-road living in Wangara and I spent a fair bit of time talking to the owner Jason and look he was absolutely fantastic to deal with I pretty much got a crash course on 12 volt systems uh, I had a bunch of questions for him and he answered them all he spent the time to answer all my questions thoroughly he wasn't trying to sell me something and rush me out the door but what really impressed me the most was the questions he was asking me you know he wanted to make sure that what he sold us would suit our needs 
So he was asking about our tow vehicle, our camper, what accessories we run, the size of our fridge, have we got an inverter, what sort of camping do we do, on grid, off grid, for how long, what's our solar setup like? So he just he wanted to know our setup and our needs before he sold us anything. So absolutely fantastic to deal with. And look, also, I'm not an auto sparky or an installer or anything like that. I'm just a, I don't know what, a somewhat capable handyman who's got just enough confidence to give an installation like this a go. And after speaking with Jason, uh, it was pretty straightforward, um, to be honest. It wasn't that difficult. Um, but yeah, anyway, I did film a little bit of the, uh, the install, so let's go and check that out. Oh, uh, just a heads up, I am somewhat hairier. Uh, when I put these batteries in so let's travel back in time. eh? okay So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate the camper And then I'm going to Disconnect the batteries and remove them Before I even move on to the charges Man, these things are heavy. Yeah, far out. <laughs> Straight back, bend the knees. Oh, God. Okay, so the batteries are out. Time to move on to replacing these chargers. Alrighty, so just unscrewed this uh, this plate here. If I lift this up. You see under here, just there. There, they're all the wires for the DC charger that come out there. So. I just need to unbolt that DC charger disconnect all the connectors on the breakers there and that'll just come straight out and then just put the new one in exactly how that one came out easy peasy there's the 240 charger down here here's the power cables I just need to trace them and just install the new ones I think it's uh it's this one now have a look when I'm under there we'll know a little bit better this one and I'm pretty sure it's that one too all right here we go. So that blue wire there, that's the ignition wire that leads all the way um, basically to the car. Wired through pin 12 on the uh, the trailer plug. So I just need to snip that off and connect the, uh, the Red Arc BC DC ignition wire to that. So there's the uh, the old 12 volt DC charger removed. Move on to the 240 charger now. Piece of cake. Now with the old, in with the new. I'm gonna uh, put it down there somewhere probably. Plug it in obviously when we're done. Run this one through here. Alright, so that's pretty much the 240 done. Um, I'm going to tidy up these wires in a little bit, tuck them into the tubing. Uh, that'll be a job right for the end, just to find little touches. Alright, so let's get on to the DC charger. Okay, so I need to solder the green and the orange wires together. That lets the DC charger know to use a lithium algorithm for the charging profile. Alrighty, so yellow, solar, brown is the output from the charger, which will go to the batteries, and the red is the input for the charger, which comes from the Anderson plug on the draw bar.
So, Red Arc BC DC charger, all wired up, tucked all the wires in. 240 charger, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. Just got to put the batteries in now, and I'm all done. Oh man, these guys are so much lighter. And they fit perfectly in the cradle, too. No need to modify that, which is good. That was bloody hot work today. <laughs> it's like 30 odd degrees here in WA, so anyway, that's pretty much all done. I just tidied up and put the um, uh, cable protectors back on. Um, <clears throat> turn the isolator on or off, you know, give power for everything and let's go and test it all. And if I smell burning plastic, I'll turn it back off. Hey! Cool, 13.2 volts. All right. Okay, let's just have a quick little look. No sparks. No bad smell, which is good. All right, I'm gonna plug in the 240 and then see if the charger comes on. All right, 240's in. So a 240 power to all the outlets there. And uh, the charge is plugged in. I haven't turned it on yet. So let's turn this guy on. Let's see what happens. Well, it's activated. So I just push this button here until it uh, selects lithium ion. There we go. So that's now doing a bulk charge, a lithium ion charging profile. I'm just going to go out and have a look at the voltmeter, see what it is. Yeah, it's already climbing up 13.4. Alright, so obviously that's going to go up at some stage. Um, I'm just going to turn that off, I'll just pull that plug straight out the back. And uh, it's pretty cloudy and overcast, but I've got the uh, got the solar panel set up. So I'm just going to plug the solar panel in. Now there's not much sun out, but apparently, apparently these Red Arc BC DC chargers they pretty much uh, take a charge in the, even on overcast days. So we'll see if that's activated. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, we got lights and LI for lithium, solar. Yep, there we go. Charging. So I'll call that a win. Two new 100 amp hour lithium batteries, 240 AC charger, and a 25 amp BC DC charger. Cool, happy with that. Nothing's melting yet. Alright guys, so I installed these batteries six days ago and I did a little bit of a test. Not a scientific test or a real world test, but I got the Dometic CFX3 95 litre fridge in here. I've got the uh, freezer section set to negative six and the fridge set to three. And I've just kept it locked in this compartment. There's no active ventilation in here. We just got these two passive vents here. And I've had the fridge empty all right so that's one of the most inefficient ways you can run these fridges so all that extra heat that this fridge has been generating has just been locked in there with it and the only power input has been this 120 watt panel on the boat loader and even so we're only now just down to 12.8 volts that's just below the safe 20% state of charge and we've been overcast the last couple of days and when we're off grid we join a 260 watt solar panel to that 120 so it's a total of what 380 watts of power so not a real world test that's going to be in the next couple of weeks when we do our two-week trip 
a good chunk of which is going to be off grid so i'm really interested to see the way that goes but having a look at the way this is performed only now just down to that 20 percent state of charge running a fridge with nothing in it and only 120 watts of solar going in i'm really pleased with that really happy so anyway look i hope you've enjoyed this episode guys if you have please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel we're also on instagram and facebook both roman in the robo so thanks again guys and catch you out there